Yeah, boy, we doing it. We doing it real big this time. Holy crap, the brightness is really bright. Um, hmm. So what I'm planning on doing here is uh, showing off my PS2 collection on live stream. <clears throat> but uh, I might have to adjust the lighting a little bit. Give me a second. Maybe we don't need that much light. Yeah, that'll be okay. My toilet's still running. <laughs> it shuts off my toilet's going to be running the entire video so I figured this would be an easier method of doing this collection video that I don't have to like upload an hour-long video or however long it's going to take um, assuming the quality is okay is it a 1080p stream or is it just like shit potato quality I figured it would be good quality simply because uh, I'm running off my Wi-Fi but uh, sometimes the mobile app seems to live stream in 360p no matter what so uh, yeah let me know how oh, it's 720p well that'll be okay as long as uh, it's not too pixelated we will just do it my fucking toilet is still running oh wait now it stopped all right so, let's get it started then. As long as it's clear enough, I will proceed. So, uh, I've actually got my two shelves on the side of me, here and here. Can't really see them. What the hell is going on? My fan is like flipping out. It's like really noisy. Alright, so we'll do it now. I had a fan running out there and it's like flipping out as soon as I turn on the stream, of course. Alright, so this just works. It'll be a bit off the cuff, but uh, alright, let's start the collection. Got my shelves right here so I can just pull them off and put them back so I don't have a big pile of games. So, yeah, new idea. I'll do it for a couple other collections, probably. The Xbox collection I could do it for as well, but, uh, alright. So, first game, Ace Combat, uh, Zero, The Belkin War. I recently collected all of the Ace Combat games, so, uh, this is the prequel to the entire series, I believe. Alright, and we got... Ace Combat 4, what's the subtitle? Shattered Skies. So this one is, uh, I believe this is the one, two, I think this is the third game chronologically, I want to say. Only thing I don't like is it, it like keeps making your comments disappear. Let's just do live chat so it doesn't hide it. There we go. Much better. That way I don't miss any comments. But, uh, yeah, another Ace Combat game, PS2 generation. And it keeps making the comments disappear. I don't like that, but whatever. We'll just keep going with it. And then this one, Ace Combat 5, got a port on PS4. HD, it's still kind of the PS2 version on the PS4 port. But uh, it did get some text upgrades and stuff like that. Oh, hey, what's up, man? I'm not even going to try to say your name. But, uh, yeah. Um, I just got, you know, greatest hits games. I don't prefer them, but I don't mind getting them either. Especially if it's going to save me $10 on the game. Because to me, even though the Greatest Hits logo is ugly, it's still kind of part of the gaming history, I guess. But uh, if it was the same price, I would probably go with the non-Greatest Hits. Alright, so that's all my Ace Combat games on PS2. Next up, we're going to another series I collected recently. Armored Core. So this is Armored Core 2. I think it has a subtitle either. 
I guess I'll show the backs of these as well. Hopefully the uh, hopefully the uh, is it is the stream too blurry where it's like hard to see this shit? Hopefully not. Yeah, they are doing uh, greatest hits PS4 games. I think it has the red label as well. I really hate how this live chat on this phone, there's like no option to make it stay up, unless I'm not seeing that. It's just kind of annoying. So you just have to keep talking if you want me to see a comment I missed. But uh, yeah, uh, Armored Core 2, I believe, I don't know if this was a launch game on PS2, or if it was just like a launch window game. But uh, it's a pretty early generation PS2 game. Let's see, what year is this? Oh, it was. It came out in the year 2000. I think the PS2 came out in 2000, so it was definitely... I, I want to say this was a launch title for the PS2. Um, the funny thing is, it still uses the... Because uh, obviously it was a launch title. It didn't have the DualShock controller. Or wait, yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. I'm thinking of PS1, what the fuck. But, no, when it came out on PS2, it didn't have, like, dual analog controls even for this game. It was still, like, I think you had to use, like, the digital buttons still. Oh, uh, yeah, good, good point about the chat. Yep, I'm pretty sure this was a launch game. I'm gonna have to take a, a chug here. So we doing it, <clears throat> we doing it real big and real live, so it's going to be a bit awkward. <clears throat> Alright, next up, we got the expansion to Armored Core 2. This is Armored Core 2 Another Age, so this is kind of a trend that they do with the Armored Core games. They release the main game and then they release a standalone expansion, which is honestly how I prefer expansions. I prefer them to just do a meaty you know, four hour, six hour expansion and have it on an actual disc. I'm perfectly fine with that. It's much better than DLC. So yes, this is more of Armored Core 2. I have not played these yet, by the way. I'm still working through the PS1 Armored Core games. But I wanted to get them all before, you know, they get too expensive. Then I got Armored Core 3 as well. I believe they kind of revamped the graphics engine and probably the controls in this one. So this was the first actual upgrade because the last one was an expansion. And then I believe most of the ones after this are kind of just expansions to Armored Core 3. So then you got Armored Core Silent Line, which is I believe another expansion. And I'm not even sure which um which timeline this one takes place in. I should explain too, the Armored Core series is a From Software game, um, obviously mech combat, but it's highly focused on customizing the mechs. So uh, that's what you do a lot. You spend a lot of time in the menus, buying parts, mix and matching parts. It's very simulation-like. You have to worry about weight, um, the power consumption of your mech. Um, you know, whether you're using ballistic weapons or energy weapons, stuff like that. You can change the size of your lock-on targeting, um, the distance of the lock-on. There's so many different things. You can edit the emblems on your mechs. So you can do any sort of offensive emblem you want. And you're not going to get banned from a fucking service model type game, which is nice. But we won't say what offensive things we've put on our mechs. But, uh, alright, next one, another expansion, Armored Core Nexus. Um, this one's actually a two-disc game. Uh, I believe one of the discs is actually remakes of some of the Armored Core PS1 levels. So, that's kind of interesting. So you get to play some of the uh, PS1 Armored Core levels with PS2 graphics, so... Pretty neat. And it also has its own, like, uh, continuation type story, I'm sure. 
the story is always pretty light in these games, just like typical From Software. But uh, it's still a pretty cool story. It's kind of like... I would say it's kind of post-apocalypse in a way. Um, dystopian future, maybe. Where corporations run the world or whatever. We got hacked the system, bro. Okay, now the last... Armored Core expansion and the last Armored Core game on PS2 is uh, Last Raven. So, uh, yeah, I don't know much to say about these games, really. What it says on the back of the box, multiple battle modes with intense one to four player action. So, let's see. It says you can use the network adapter to play this uh, four players. So I wonder if there's a way to, like, play this online somehow. So... That might be interesting, but, uh, hack the system, bro. I'll just keep moving, because I got a lot of games, like, I'm barely through the first tier of this first shelf. I got two shelves, and I'm just getting through the first shelf, the top of the first shelf. Here's one I found at Goodwill. I probably pointed it out in a pickups video. Burnout 3. Played it a bit. Um, this series is always great for the crashing the car destruction. Supposedly Burnout 3 is one of the best ones, so I was glad to find this. I would have preferred to find the Xbox original version, since I'm sure that's a bit better graphically, but the PS2 version is just fine. Um, so yeah, Goodwill Purchase. The only other Burnout game I have is Burnout Paradise on PS4. And then we got Call of Dirty big red one. This is the collector's edition, so I think it has I think it has some extras on the disc or something. Probably some making of footage. So this was the uh, downgraded port that PS2 got. Uh, well, it's actually, it's not a port of the 360 game. It's actually its, its own game. So, uh, yeah, it's worth having if you want to, you know, play all the you know, the Call of Duty campaigns or whatever. I also wish I would have found that on Xbox original, but that's the one I found at Goodwill, so I picked it up. Alright, a really good game here. Castlevania Lament of Innocence. And uh, this was the first 3D Castlevania game by the Symphony of the Night creator. There was a 3D Castlevania on N64 called uh, Castlevania 64 or uh, Legacy of Darkness. Um, but this was the first, you know, 3D Castlevania by the Cynthia Night guy. Um, it's interesting. It tries to be a bit like Devil May Cry with its combat. Um, the levels are kind of squarish and undetailed, but it's still a decent game, I would say. It's, it's worth playing on the PS2. And then it got kind of an upgraded sequel expansion called Castlevania Curse of darkness and the 3d um it was done okay it could have been better the character models were really nice you know ps2 style character models so they were highly detailed it's just the environments was just a series of square rooms without much detail basically just you move from combat arena to combat arena he didn't really nail the uh exploration of symphony of the night it was more just like a Devil May Cry or a God of War or whatever type where you just move from room to room fighting Castlevania enemies. This one, though, added more uh, RPG elements. So this one is a bit closer to kind of a Symphony of the Night style game. It has more exploration, uh, more customization for the character. I believe you can use different weapons, whereas... Um, Lament of Innocence was basically all whip swinging. And going back to Lament of Innocence, this is actually an origin story of Castlevania. So this was like, I don't know, this was before Dracula became Dracula. It basically explains how Dracula turns into a vampire. So it's pretty interesting. Cool story-wise, and this one's I have not beaten yet. I have uh, Curse of Darkness on Xbox Original as well, but uh, yeah, they're they're cool. They're just kind of tedious to play because of the repetitive environments. It gets a bit old exploring them, but uh, they're good games if you can stomach that kind of style. 
speaking of Devil May Cry style games, this game, Chaos Legion by Capcom, this came out, I believe, after Devil May Cry 1 and I think either before or after Devil May Cry 2. A lot of people consider this game the real Devil May Cry 2 because I believe people who worked on Devil May Cry worked on this. I might be wrong about that though. But uh, yeah, this is a much better hack and slash type game than fucking Devil May Cry 2. That game was a piece of shit. But this, you know, this game is a little bit rushed feeling, but it has nice art style and everything. Um, this is, this game is kind of more like Dynasty Warriors meets Devil May Cry because it's got kind of that Devil May Cry battle system, but you fight larger waves of enemies, basically. And yeah, it's got a neat gothic storyline. Got James Grider looking ass character. So, I would recommend that one. And then we got this one, Clock Tower 3. This was given to me by a girl. So yeah. Yeah. I bet someone doesn't, someone we know doesn't get <laughs> games gifted to them by girls. But uh, no, Clock Tower 3, um, long running series. It started on uh, Super Nintendo actually. I believe the first game was a Super Nintendo survival horror game which is kind of interesting and then they did a ps1 game and then uh gothic isn't soy or gothic isn't uh i would say gothic like the actual historical gothic <laughs> but uh yeah um as far as this game um it's more of a hide and seek kind of game where you don't fight a lot you have to do a lot of running and hiding but I have not beaten this yet. I rented it once back in the day, and then uh, now I own it. And I played it a little bit, but I honestly want to play through the entire series. So Super Nintendo game, PS1 game, and then this game. I don't think they made a fourth game. I'm not too sure. I'm not super well-versed in the Clock Tower series. All right, we're through the first tier. Each of these shelves is five tiers, so <laughs> we got nine more of these shelves to go so and then we got a couple more spare games as well so. um, next up Contra Shattered Soldier one of my favorite PS2 games for sure and one of the best Contra games um, it's hard for me to pick a favorite Contra game to be honest um, I like Contra 1 on NES simply because it's classic but uh, this one is probably the most up-to-date one and best gameplay and graphics wise but uh, Contra 1, Contra 3, Contra Hardcore, Super C, all good Contra games. I guess I should talk a little bit more about this. Um, I don't know how much I should really uh, dwell on each game. Oh, nice, you did the free McBoot mod. I have that as well, so I have a fat PS2 modded. So any of the expensive PS2 games I don't want to buy anymore or, uh, you know, fan-translated Japanese games. So, yeah, I'll just kind of talk about each game. And if it gets to be too much, I'll just do a second stream later. Maybe I'll go through half of these now and half later because this is going to take a while. I'm already like 20 minutes in almost and barely barely made a dent but uh, Contra Shattered Soldier it's a 2D style Contra game with 3D graphics you have three different weapons you switch between and each weapon has two firing modes so it is actually six different weapons if you think about it um, very cool it's kind of focused on boss battles though there's not a lot of in between uh, mob fighting but uh, it's got a scoring system where the more objects you destroy in the environment and the less deaths you take, the higher your score. And then you unlock uh, later chapters and better endings. So it's got multiple endings and all that shit. But uh, yeah, very good game. Highly recommended. Awesome music too. Um, Akira Yameoka of uh, the Silent Hill series did the music for this. And it's like really rocking metal type music. Not pussy metal. 
And then it got a sequel, but this one is much different. It's Neo Contra. Yeah, hype-ass music. Um, so this isn't a 2D game. It's a top-down shooter, which uh, the Contra series has had top-down levels in the past. So it's kind of like they turned those top-down Contra levels into the entire game. And it's not quite as good because of that. I always prefer the 2D Contra levels, but this is still a good game. It's just not quite as good as Shattered Soldier. And the story is a bit more comical. It's almost like they weren't taking it serious with this one. So, uh, yeah, it's still cool. It doesn't have uh, the Akira Yameoka music, but it still has a pretty rockin' soundtrack. Awesome intro. Look up the intro for Neo Contra. It's just so over the top. Great intro song. And then next game is uh, a game in the Mana RPG series. I mentioned it in my pickups video yesterday, and that is Dawn of Mana. So this is the first, I believe, the first 3D mana game. And uh, they focused on using a Havoc physics engine. So this was one of the first, like, JRPGs to have Havoc physics. So you use, like, objects in the environment to toss at enemies. And I believe tossing the objects at enemies makes them drop more of the emblems that you use to level up. But, uh... Yeah, it's a typical action RPG. It's not too special, but uh, I wanted to get it just to have the complete mana collection. So, Pretty much every game in my collection here I would recommend to people. So if any of these sound interesting to you, check them out. I'm sure you, you will like them. There's only a couple PS2 games here that uh, are kind of bad, and I just kind of have them because they're cheesy or whatever. But uh, like this game... I probably wouldn't recommend Deus Ex on uh, PS2. The PC version is so much better, but I got this simply because I wanted a hard copy of Deus Ex. And it's an interesting port, like what they had to do to get it to work right on PS2. So it's got dumbed down geometry, it's got more load points between the levels, and they adapted the controls to work with a controller. Although the interesting thing is you can plug in a USB keyboard and mouse to your PS2 and play this with full like PC style controls. So that's kind of interesting. And uh, it has a different full motion video uh, intro. Is uh, Deus Ex worth playing? Definitely. Any way you can play Deus Ex 1 is a good way to play it. I would just recommend playing the PC version. But... You know, this, this one is serviceable. It's not downgraded enough to be a different experience, but uh, you'll have a much better experience on the PC version. It's not like it's hard to run on PC. There's another interesting game the same girl gave to me. She gave me a ton of her PS2 games, so that was really generous of her. Um, Devil Kings. Now, this is, I believe, kind of like a... Almost... I would say this is almost like uh, Kessin and uh, um, Dynasty Warriors, but it's kind of like a Capcom. It says it's from the creators of Resident Evil and Devil May Cry, so it's basically like the Capcom take on Dynasty Warriors, even more so than that Chaos Legion game. I haven't played it a lot, though. I've just watched videos. Yeah, um... For Deus Ex, it you know, originated on PC, so that's definitely the best version. But a lot of like PS2 games that get ported to PC, they don't, uh, they're not as accurate, I would say. Speaking of that, here's one of the games that's gotten ported so many times, Devil May Cry 1. But this is still the best version of it to play. Like None of the HD collections have done this one justice in my opinion like there's always graphical glitches sound glitches stuff like that so this is why i keep my original devil may cry one copy it is a classic so i will never sell that shit and now we have the black sheep of the devil may cry series and you know it's coming devil may cry 2 i originally Plan not to buy this in the early 2000s, but eventually I got it for like $5. I'm like, fuck it. I should just have it for the sake of the the history of the series. But it was a two-disc game. It was highly rushed. 
I believe it wasn't even going to be a Devil May Cry game originally, if I remember the history. Um, very bad combat, and I just dropped it, but it doesn't even matter that I dropped it, because uh, this game is a piece of shit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Devil May Cry 2, terrible combat system. Uh, let me see what that comment said. Oh, you played Devil May Cry 2 first? Oh, God. Rip. Alright. So, next up. Then the series Redemption, Devil May Cry 3. And actually, this is... I forgot to show two games, so... I also have the original vanilla Devil May Cry 3, and this is the, uh, the special edition, which was a Greatest Hits Only copy. Both of these are good versions, but uh, obviously you want the special edition for all the extras, but this one's perfectly fine as well. But, uh, yeah, Devil May Cry 3. It definitely uh, improved the series quite a bit. Um, I'd say this is even better uh, mechanically than Devil May Cry 1. Yeah, Greatest Hits. That's the only way it released, and I, I was kind of bummed about that, because although... The Red Devil May Cry logo matches the red spine, at least. But, yeah. Um, but, yeah, a lot of improvements with this one. It kind of started the more, like, over-the-top comical style. Devil May Cry 1 was a bit over-the-top, but this one really sent it to a new level. Uh, a lot of innovations with the style system and uh, more acrobatic moves and stuff like that. But uh, Devil May Cry 1, I think, had a better atmosphere overall. Uh, but yeah, we'll move on. I forgot to mention this game. Call of Dirty, Finest Hour. This is uh, kind of uh, not a port of Call of Duty 1, but kind of its own game once again. But this came out around Call of Duty 1. It was the console Call of Duty 1. Um, I do have this on Xbox Original. But uh, yeah, um, it's an okay game. You know, it's, it's whatever. Not much to say about it. This is an interesting game. Dirge of Cerberus, Final Fantasy VII. This is the third-person shooter starring Vincent from Final Fantasy VII. It takes place after the story of Final Fantasy VII, and I believe even after Advent Children. Um, it's kind of mediocre as far as third-person shooters go, but the story is quite nice if you're into you know, Final Fantasy VII. Um, it's not terrible either, like, it's, the, the shooting mechanics work, but it just doesn't do anything really special, it's just like an average competent shooter with some good Final Fantasy VII story attached to it, basically. Okay, next up, very good RPG, which has been ported over to, uh, 3DS, that is Dragon Quest VIII. What's the subtitle? Journey of the Cursed King. This is also on Android, of all things. Um, I think it's on iOS as well. But, uh, so you got this nice cardboard slipcase. And I believe... Oh yeah, they tried to sell... I don't know if you can see that, but it says it comes with a Final Fantasy XII demo. So this was still when they were struggling to sell Dragon Quest games in the U.S. So they had to bundle a, uh, they had to bundle the fucking Final Fantasy XII demo. So you can see there's Dragon Quest VIII and then Final Fantasy XII demo as well. That's kind of interesting that they had to do that. Um, this version still holds up. Like this is actually an upgraded version over the Japanese release. Um, the Japanese version of Dragon Quest VIII didn't have uh, voice acting, and it didn't have an orchestrated soundtrack. So with our U.S. release, they gave us both of those, which is kind of what they did with Dragon Quest uh, XI recently. But uh, Dragon Quest XI, they just added voice acting in the U.S. version. And then uh, it took them till the Switch version to add orchestrated music. So unfortunately, the PS4 version of Dragon Quest XI still just has the MIDI soundtrack, and they don't have any plans of porting all the Switch extras over. But speaking of Dragon Quest XI, I downloaded the uh, 
the Nintendo Switch demo of Dragon Quest XI, <clears throat> and surprisingly it doesn't look that bad. Um, docked, it just looks like a slightly downgraded, maybe 1080p version of Dragon Quest XI on PS4. Um, handheld mode, you can tell it's a little bit lower, but the way these cel-shaded Dragon Quest games look, it still looks fine even with up the, with uh, downgrade graphics. But uh, it does suck that the PC and PS4 version might not get that content. But I have a feeling they will eventually. The Switch shit is probably just a timed exclusive. But uh, yeah, this is a perfectly fine version of Dragon Quest uh, VIII. Um, the 3DS version has extras and gameplay changes, but this still has the orchestrated soundtrack, whereas the 3DS version has MIDI only. So they're both worth playing. Like You'd do perfectly fine playing the PS2 version of this. The one major difference is this has random battle encounters, whereas the 3DS version you can see the enemies on the field map, so you can kind of avoid them. All right, now this is a really great game, Fatal Frame 3. Now, I don't have Fatal Frame 1 and 2 on PS2, but I do have the Xbox original Fatal Frame 1 and 2 ports, which have extras over the PS2 version. So I have all the ideal versions of Fatal Frame 1 through 3. So I got the, the Xbox extras, and then Fatal Frame 3 was PS2 only. Oh, yeah, they... Oh yeah, the Dragon Ball artist. Yeah, yeah, he's done so much shit. And yeah, that's cool you rented it. You did um, play quite a few PS2 games back in the day, I know. But yeah, um, Fatal Frame 3, PS2 exclusive. Um, you know, it's a horror series, obviously, where you use a camera to take pictures of spirits to vanquish them or whatever. Um... And they always got, you know, them hot Japanese waifus in the series. Um, but unfortunately, Nintendo owns this franchise, I believe. So Fatal Frame 4 and Fatal Frame 5 were both on Wii and Wii U. Fatal Frame 5 did not come to the U.S. Or no, Fatal Frame 4 did not come to the U.S. at all which is unfortunate. Um, I think Europe, Europe got it. And then Fatal Frame 5 did come to the U.S., but we only got a fucking digital copy. And I think they still charge like $60 for a digital copy of 5. Um, so I'm never going to fucking pay that for it, so I'm never going to be able to play it. it. pisses me off. So I don't know. I wish Nintendo would like do a collection of Fatal Frame 4 and 5 on Switch, but... Even if they did that, they'd probably do some bullshit, like, uh, you know, make it half digital or some fucking shit. Sick of this crap! <laughs> Best I can do for a digital copy is zero. <laughs> Next one, Final Fantasy X. A game I own so many copies of. I got it on PS2, PS3... Vita, PS4, and Nintendo Switch now. So I have too many copies of this game, but this is the original vanilla version on PS2. And I did enjoy it back in the day. I beat the entire thing. It's one of the few RPGs I beat right away. This one I did not beat, though. Final Fantasy X-2. But uh, I did watch my ex play through the entire thing, so I did get a good gist of it. I will probably eventually try to play X2 on the Nintendo Switch version. But uh, this is more of like a Charlie's Angels style girl power type of game. But yeah, it's like fan service shit, exactly. It's very fan service y, although not really in a feminist way, so that's cool. Um, and the battle system is actually really good in this. It, it brings back the classic job system from Final Fantasy. So the battle system is really good. It's just the story can't be taken that serious. It's got some serious elements in the story, but it's just very J-pop, I would say. 
And then uh, I have the steel book of Final Fantasy XII, the original vanilla Final Fantasy XII. And it, it is starting to get some like chip damage on it, which you can kind of see right there. I don't know, the, the paint on these painted steel books eventually starts to chip away, which is annoying. But uh, yeah, it comes with a bonus disc with, uh, I believe, like a making of video. But uh, this version is very outdated at this point. Yes, there are there were PS2 steelbooks, several actually. I got one other one, which I will get to. <clears throat> I think I have just one other one. But yeah, there was a shitload of PS2 steelbooks actually. <clears throat> but yeah, this is still a decent game to play. It's just that the international job version is much better. Yeah, PS1 had the long, long boxes. Oh, God, now we got a good game here. Good game, like Quake. Yeah, boy. We got God Hand up in this piece. This is the Clover Studios beat-em-up, now known as Platinum Games. Kind of a classic beat-em-up style game, but in uh, 3D graphics. Um, very comical, very meme-worthy. Very hardcore gameplay. It made the fucking bitch ass mainstream game journalists cry. They gave it a bad rating, even though it's a fucking awesome game. Um, but there's plenty of videos about this game. That's all I need to say. Oh, it emulates well? That's cool. That's good. Uh, okay. I forgot to mention. Go back. Yeah, we'll go back in time. Go back to the E section, and we got Enter the Matrix on PS2. I also have this on uh, Xbox Original, and uh, each version has different, um, different uh, th controls, I guess. But uh, it's not the greatest game. It hasn't aged that well. But uh, interesting thing is it's got, like, actual full motion video cutscenes as you can see right there but uh, yeah it was interesting to play but it just hasn't aged that well yeah it was basically bait for the Matrix fans to play even though it wasn't that great okay next up oh shit we're three we were on the third shelf now this game the classic God of War 1 you know Classic action game, western action game, before it got cucked out with uh, Dad of War or whatever it's called. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is the classic. You had, you had Kratos fucking big titty bitches, and no one gave a fuck back then. People still don't give a fuck, but they want to think. Oh, uh, the making of DVD? Are you talking about Enter the Matrix or God of War? I think this God of War, uh, actually that might be 2 that has that, but uh, yeah, of course I have God of War 2, and <laughs> disaster has struck. Disaster. <laughs> um, oh, fix it up, baby. Fuck it, we're doing it live. This shit is bound to happen when you're fucking doing it live. Um, but yes, I have God of War 2. And this is the two-disc version. This might be the one, yeah, this is probably the one you're thinking of. It's got the bonus disc right there. Bonus DVD. And uh, I think all versions of this have it, unless the Greatest Hits version doesn't. But yes, I have God of War 2. I have the, I think the PS3 HD collection of God of War as well. So, yeah, I don't have to say much about God of War. It's such a well-known series. Okay, next up. Really good game. Oh, the Greatest Hits version has that as well. Um, but this is a nice collection of Gradius 3 and 4. Good shoot 'em up series. Um, these are arcade perfect. I have Gradius 3 on Super Nintendo, but this is more arcade perfect than the SNES version. Much harder as well. 
And uh, Gradius 4 is actually pretty interesting. I believe that was one of the first Gradius games with like 3D graphics. So uh, yeah, very cool. Good hardcore shoot 'em up game. I'll just keep moving along. We have Gradius 5. Now this was made by Treasure, not, uh, not the internal Konami team. But uh, Treasure made games like Ikaruga, Radiant Silver Gun, Guardian Heroes, Gunstar Heroes. So they finally got a crack at Gradius. I believe, though, former Treasure members did work at Konami, and then they split off and made Treasure. So technically, this was Treasure coming back to Konami to make a game. And what a game it is. Gradius 5, awesome. Like, fully 3D, PS2-style graphics. Awesome music. It's one of my favorite shoot 'em up soundtracks, to be honest. Um, so it has seven levels. The changes in difficulty. You are such a greedy person. <laughs> yeah, I'm so greedy for owning all these games. But yeah, um, the difficulty levels <laughs> um, makes a lot of changes with the uh, the <clears throat> patterns of the enemies. If you put it on the hardest difficulty, there's some levels where it's just like filled with bullets, filled with meteors flying at you. It's awesome how crazy it gets, and you can play it with unlimited continues, so you can just experience the craziness and die as much as you want and still beat it. Just so fun to play. Highly recommend this game. It's one of my favorite PS2 games. <clears throat> Next up. A port of a good RPG series, kind of a subpar port though. That's Grandia 2. Um, definitely, if you can, play this on Dreamcast or the uh, PC HD remaster because this PS2 version is subpar. It's doable if it's the only choice you have, but uh, it's definitely the worst experience. It's kind of, it's still, I believe it's still considered turn based, but it's also got some action elements. So you take turns in the combat, but you can interrupt enemies before they get their attack in, and then their like timer resets where they have to start attacking again. So it's got kind of action elements like that, and the story in these series has always been a bit comical, so it's more of a light-hearted style RPG with some series elements. And then many years later, they finally made this one, Grandia 3. I think this was made by a completely different team because I believe the guy who made Grandia 1 and 2 actually passed away. So Grandia 3 is made by a totally different team. It's still got kind of the same combat system, but you can definitely tell it's a different game. It's not terrible, it's just not as good as the others. I do like the intro song in this game. It's like a typical Japanese anime style intro. It's all happy and shit. Um... All right, so next up, whew, we got a lot of Grand Theft Auto games. I've got every single GTA game. Yeah, I, I like those RPGs with uh, more lighthearted stories, stuff like Earthbound. It's just like my Japanese animes. All right, so Grand Theft Auto, here we go. We got five games. First up, Grand Theft Auto... Uh, Vice City Stories. So this is a PS2 port of the PSP game. I wanted to have a version I could play on the TV. Although honestly now I could play the PSP version on my PlayStation TV. But this was an interesting port. It's got upgraded graphics over the PSP version. And uh, it's one of the best GTA games honestly even though it was on PSP. Um, so it's a prequel to Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Kind of shows the build up to Vice City. So that's pretty interesting. Glad to have that one. <clears throat> oh, getting getting worn out doing this already. Might have to do like half. And I, I put these in order on my shelf, so the next one is Canical Order, uh, Vice City. So yes, this is this is one of the uh, main reasons I bought my PS2 back in the day, this and Metal Gear Solid 2, I'm like, okay, I need a PS2 now. I looked at the preview videos of Vice City, I'm like, oh my god, it's such an upgrade over GTA 3. I gotta have it, so I got the PS2. Um, but yeah, awesome game. One of my favorite settings in the GTA universe. Um, yeah, just 
an 80s style GTA game. I don't have to talk that much about GTA. Everyone knows about GTA. Yep, definitely made me get the PS2. I wanted MGS2 and Silent Hill 2 as well, but I knew MGS2 was getting the upgraded substance version, so I waited to get that several months later, as well as Silent Hill 2 got its greatest hitch it, ah, greatest hits edition, which had extra endings and stuff. So I waited to get all those games till later. But Vice City was the first game I owned on PS2. So and of course we got you were because you were a Sony fanboy. Yeah, that's a good reason. <laughs> uh, so I got Grand Theft Auto, Liberty City Stories, also a PSP port to PS2. This was the first PSP game, but uh, yeah, it's nice to be able to play it on the TV. It's also a prequel to GTA 3. Yeah, of course you're gonna get MGS and Resident Evil. <laughs> All right, Grand Theft Auto 3. The classic. I played it plenty before I had a PS2, so obviously I bought it eventually. It wasn't like the first PS2 game I bought, but I had played it plenty before getting my PS2. But yeah, it's the one that started the whole 3D Grand Theft Auto craze. And then probably still one of the best gameplay-wise Grand Theft Auto games is of course San Andreas. Um, I do like the setting in this game quite a bit. It's just, I like Vice City's setting a lot more with that 80s flavor. But this, probably the best gameplay-wise. I think in a lot of ways it's better than GTA 4 and 5 gameplay-wise. But uh, then they kind of ended this uh, canon of the Grand Theft Auto. Um, yeah, I don't think... Claude wasn't even in uh, GTA 4 at all. I think they started a new canon with GTA 4 and GTA 5, so all these games are not canon anymore. Okay, next up, some games I got at... Yeah, the, the HD Grand Theft Auto games, I believe, are a new storyline canon. So, yeah, it's kind of weird, but... Some more Goodwill purchases, Gran Turismo 3, greatest hits version. I got Gran Turismo, I believe, 1 and 2 on PS1, so I figured I'd get all the PS2 games once I spotted them at Goodwill. They were super cheap, like $3 a piece. Of course, I got Gran Turismo 4 as well. Very realistic driving games. They're just not that exciting. Like It's not focused on crashing and shit. But... Uh, Oh, nice. Yeah, I played the shit out of GTA 3. My friends and I would hand off the controller. And someone would try to do a rampage, like kill as many people and blow up as many cars as they could until they got arrested, and then they challenge the next person to do better. Oh, nice. <clears throat> I didn't know you had any racing games back then. Oh, here's a PS2 game I got recently. I had rented it back in the day. That's the PS2 port of Half-Life 1. And this actually includes the Blue Shift expansion as well. Um, I rented this back in the day, even though I had a gaming PC, just because I was curious of how Half-Life looked on PS2. And it's an excellent port. Like This is the best console version. There's a Dreamcast version that's kind of unofficial, but this is the best. Half-Life 1 Classic. <clears throat> and this game was originally going to be a Dreamcast release. I believe it got a European release on Dreamcast, but uh, this uh, this uh, PS2 version is what we got in the U.S. So uh, it's got some bug fixes over the, the Dreamcast version, but uh, the Dreamcast actually has better graphics. That's like a lot of the cases with Dreamcast to PS2 ports. The Dreamcast would look better. Oh, it might be the... Yeah, I mean, it could be. I, I still think that meme is the Deus Ex guy. It's just so horribly drawn. I don't. I can't see a lot of people saying this is their favorite because this is actually a niche game. <laughs> but it's a very generic style cover. But yeah, Headhunter. It's an interesting game. It's a third-person shooter. It's got adventure elements as well. Uh, it's got driving elements. 
can see he's driving a motorcycle on the back there. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that cover was uh, um, Deus Ex. But uh, next up, I guess we'll do this one. Ico, or Ico, however you pronounce it. The classic, I think this was maybe a launch game or maybe... Oh no, this was 2001, so this was a second year PS2 release. And uh, yeah, it's just a platforming puzzle fantasy type game. But you can get an HD remaster of it on PS3 now. But still a cool version to have, PS2 classic. Alright, then next we have this, the PS2 port of Indigo Prophecy, aka Fahrenheit. Yeah, Ico is kind of bored me, but it's got a cool art style. But yeah, Indigo Prophecy, this is the censored version. All the console versions of this are censored. Actually, all the US versions of this are censored. The uh, European Fahrenheit version had uh, actual like nudity, I think, in it. But yeah, this is a interesting game, but yeah, it's it's, you know, kind of a point and click style game. It's got some cool cutscenes and everything, but definitely an overrated developer. So, but this is probably their best game as well. Like Heavy Rain and all their other later games are just like you know, you know all about it. It's it's meant to push the pause. Okay, let's see. I guess, shit. I guess we'll start with this. I'm not sure. Oh, I put this. I put this in the J section, even though it's called Rise to Honor. It's Jet Lee's Rise to Honor, which uh, pretty mediocre game, <laughs> to be honest. This is one of the games I wouldn't really recommend. It's just I saw it at Goodwill, and I like Jet Lee movies, so I'm like. I gotta have a Jet Li game in my collection. I still don't have any uh, of the Jackie Chan games. I think there's two or three different Jackie Chan games. There's like a NES game. I think there's a PS1 game and maybe even a PS2 game, but I can't remember. But yeah, this is just like a third person beat em up action game and it's pretty mediocre. But it's, I think it's the only Jet Li game that exists. Might be another one, I can't remember. <clears throat> and then more Goodwill purchases. Katamari, I never. Dema Demasi? Katamari Demasi. <clears throat> Haven't played this series a lot. I know it's got a cult following, but I just couldn't really get into it just because it's not my type of game, really. But uh, it's quirky, it's interesting. I'll, I'll try to get into it eventually. It's just. I don't know. Just not really something that catches my fancy that much. <clears throat> but, at the same time, I saw the sequel, We Love Katamari, also at Goodwill, for $3. So, you know, I got PS2 cult classics. So, yeah. You roll a big ball around and you pick up shit with your ball. That's all I know about it. <laughs> <clears throat> and this one is kind of interesting. It's the only Jack and Dexter game I have, but it's Jack X Racing. And uh, you have to get the greatest hits version of this to get the bug fix that makes your game freeze when you save. It's a weird thing with this version. Um, if you play this on a PS2 Slim, it'll freeze if you leave your memory card in the machine when you're not saving. Something like that. But if you play it on a fat PS2, it doesn't freeze, so yeah, it's kind of a weird version of the game. But I got it for uh, $3, so. But as long as you keep the memory card out of the slot while you're playing, and then when you go to the menu and save, it won't freeze. But yeah, if you leave it in to autosave, it'll freeze on a slim PS2. But yeah, I kind of want to try the Jack series. Um, there was the PS4 ports, which they made limited run versions of, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to buy PS4 emulated PS2 versions, so I'll probably just try to get the entire series on PS2 at some point. And then here's another interesting game I found at Goodwill. Kessen Three, 
Uh, this is like a strategy, action strategy game. Kind of a mix of real-time strategy and like Dynasty Warriors, I guess. So it's like Feudal Japan. This is the only game I've tried. I just, you know, randomly found it at Goodwill. Didn't have a ton of interest in it, but it seemed interesting and like something different from the usual sports and dance game crap that you see at Goodwill. So I picked it up, played it a little bit. It's interesting for people who like the Feudal Japan battles and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, there's a couple games in the series. Obviously, this is the third one. And then a series that I struggle, 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 struggle to get into. And that is Kingdom Hearts. So this is the only version of Kingdom Hearts I own, the PS2 original. And stupidly, back in the day, I bought it with a Greatest Hits disc inside. So it's like a mismatched normal edition cover and greatest hits disc. But yeah, I only bought this because of the Final Fantasy characters in it, and I've just never been able to get into it. Although I do have on my modded PS2, I have the, uh, what are they called, Final Mix versions, which never came out in the US on PS2, but they got translation patches. So I have Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 Final Mix on my PS2 translated. But who knows when I'll get to it. It's just, it's not my thing. I like action games, but I hate Disney's shit. Alright. This game, Killzone 1, was supposed to be the Halo killer on PS2. <laughs> but it wasn't quite that. It was good technically. Good graphics for the PS2, but kind of clunky gameplay. It spawned into a much better sequels with... Killzone 2 and Killzone 3. But, uh, yeah, this one I just found at, I believe, Goodwill. I'm like, well, might as well get the origins of the series since I have all the other games. So. And now this developer makes shit like fucking Horizon. <laughs> so, yeah. Now this is... Yeah, the Killzone lore is pretty cool. I agree. I like the Hellgas. They're basically fascists. <laughs> um, Alright, so this one I found at Goodwill. It's an interesting sci-fi survival horror game called Lifeline. And you control this simply by using a microphone. So, I actually have my USB microphone that I use for my live streams. And you can just plug that into the PS2 and use it. But, uh, yeah, I don't know if you can see that. It says microphone or headset microphone required so you can't play this with a controller it's all voice commands you like go there do this go go do that and I did test it out a bit I didn't play through it but the voice commands do actually work perfectly so uh, yeah it was an interesting find for three dollars at Goodwill okay this is a really good game I like it Manhunt 1 uh, I kind of want the Xbox version as well, but uh, PS2 version is just fine. But it's a stealth, stealth thriller, almost horror game in some ways. But you just sneak around killing dudes to escape like a underground TV show, basically. Yeah, it did cause controversy, especially uh, Manhunt 2. They censored the shit out of it. But uh, this one's actually pretty fucking brutal, some of the kills. And just like the sound effects when you're like chopping people's heads off and you hear like the blood gurgling sounds and shit. But uh, it's actually a decent game. Um, it's on the Grand Theft Auto 3 engine, so it's got kind of similar physics and controls. But yeah, I do not own a hard copy of Manhunt 2 simply because it was censored back in the day. So I didn't want to support it because of the censorship. But you can get an uncensored PC version, which is interesting. It just sucks there was no like physical copy of an uncensored Manhunt 2. Ooh, now we got a really good series here. I don't know if these are in the right order, though. I can't remember. I think this is the first game, though. Hey, Marcel. Welcome to the stream. So... Very good series called Maximo. This is uh, Army of Zin, well, versus Army of Zin. 
and this is in the Ghosts and Goblins Capcom series, originally a 2D side-scrolling action game. But yeah, this is an awesome game. Definitely one of the best PS2 games. It's so polished. I think it runs 60 frames a second. Just really tight, challenging gameplay. Cool art style. Good platforming and combat. So yeah, very awesome. Got kind of that horror, gothic horror element to it. Yeah, it's in the same universe as Ghosts and Goblins. There's also... There's also a SNES game called uh, Firebrand or something. I forget what it's called, but you play as the Gargoyle. I think there's another one called Gargoyles, Gargoyles Quest. But I also have the sequel, Maximo uh, Ghosts to Glory. So you can see the name Ghosts to Glory. Kind of sounds like Ghosts and Goblins. So yeah, the sequel, more of the same. In Way of the Warrior, can we play a Shadow? A shadow was that one of the like the characters just in a shadow form? I can't remember if you could do that. I feel like you can, but I can't remember exactly. I think there is a way. Okay, next up, I guess we will do this one. I have this game on Dreamcast as well, and uh, the PS2 version is okay. Of MDK2, Armageddon. Um, so this is an upgraded port of the Dreamcast version. Upgraded as far as gameplay is a bit upgraded, but uh, graphically it's actually downgraded compared to the Dreamcast version. So I actually own both of these. Um, this game is actually a third-person shooter. It's made by Shiny. Uh, no, the original was made by Shiny, but this is actually made by, uh, I believe, oh yeah, Bioware. So, yeah. Um, I don't know if you can do stage fatalities with Gulab Jamin in Way of the Warrior. I can't remember. I think any move that, like, uppercuts people in Way of the Warrior can do stage fatalities. So, yeah, he probably can. But, yeah, MDK2, originally, the first game was on PS1 and PC. It was made by Shiny, people who did Earthworm Jim. Um, but this sequel was made by Bioware when Bioware didn't suck. Um, but yeah, the PS2 version has a lot of nice gameplay upgrades. It's just graphically not as good as the Dreamcast one. Kind of interesting how the Dreamcast did better graphics in a lot of ways. Alright, so next up, I guess we will do... Actually, we'll start with this one. I don't keep these games on the same shelf simply because I have Xbox ports of these. But uh, I have Medal of Honor Frontline, which is a downgraded spin-off of uh, Medal of Honor Allied Assault on PC. But I have the Xbox version, which is a bit better, technically. So yeah, Medal of Honor series. I also have Medal of Honor Rising Sun, the uh, Pacific Combat Medal of Honor game. Also, I have all these games on... Uh, Xbox, so I don't really keep these on the main shelf. These were all found at Goodwill for $3 each. I actually had the PS2 versions before I found the Xbox versions. And then this game I keep on the main shelf because I believe this is like a PS2 exclusive. But uh, Medal of Honor Vanguard. Yeah, so it's I think this was, this came out ar around the time that the Xbox 360 uh, Medal of Honor Airborne came out. So they made this PS2 version of Airborne basically. So you still get to like parachute into the battlefield, but it's a completely different game. Playing FPS on early console must have been. Yeah, the, the early console FPS were always struggling to figure out the controls. It was basically once Halo came out that they really perfected the. Uh, console controls for shooters all right next up we got this the Mega Man uh, anniversary collection which is uh, 10 Mega Man games so it's Mega Man 1 through 8 I believe and then it also has like two other spin-off games um, but the porting job in this isn't the greatest so it's not a very accurate collection 
but it's still serviceable. It's just, there's honestly not a perfect way to play Mega Man games other than the original NES. Like, even the newer PS4 and Switch collection has issues. I don't know why you're talking about Way of the Warrior so much. I'm not trying to uh, sidetrack my stream here talking about Way of the Warrior. But yeah, it's an okay collection, Mega Man. This is a much better one, though. The Mega Man X collection. This was actually well done. Now, I believe what the issue with uh, the Anniversary Collection is the games were rendered at 480i, whereas this collection they're rendered at 240p, which is the original Super Nintendo resolution. So this looks blurry. It also has sound emulation issues, but this is actually a great conversion. So, recommend the Mega Man X collection. This one, not so much. It'd probably be better to get the PS4 collection or Switch collection. So, but, let's see. And this isn't technically a PS2 game, but I have it in the PS4 or PS2 section because it's got a PS2 style case. And that is the Metal Gear Solid 1. This is the version that came in the Legacy Collection on uh, PS2. But I only have this single disc of it. I kind of wish I had the Legacy Collection, but yeah, it's, it's PS1 discs inside a PS2 case. So it's kind of interesting. The only problem is if you don't have the outer case for this collection, it doesn't show Merrill's uh, codec frequency on the back. Because normally when you have to call up uh, Merrill on the codec, you have to look at the back of the box to find her frequency. So if you don't have the outer box for this Legacy Collection, it doesn't have her code. But luckily I do have the PS1 copy as well, so it's kind of... doesn't matter. I basically got this because my PS1 discs were scratched up, so these are just basically the PS1 discs that I use. Alright, so now we're getting into the Metal Gear Solid series. So next up, we have this vanilla Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty, which I haven't owned for a while, but then my friend Giuliano sent me his copy. And there are a few subtle differences with the graphics, but uh, yeah, the one that started it all on PS2. And then this is the one that I waited for. Yes, I do have Xbox Original. I will probably do... I don't know if I've done an Xbox Original Collection video. I'll have to look. I don't remember doing one. But I want to do an Xbox Original Collection video, a Wii Collection. Pretty much all my collections I'd like to do videos. It's just PS2 is the largest one, apart from my PS1 Collection. But I did a PS1 Collection video. So I'm just getting this PS2 one out of the way. But here's the game that I was waiting to get on my PS2 when I first got it. I was so tempted to get MGS2 right away, but I waited for the upgraded Substance version. So this one has a lot of extras on it. Let's just read it off. 350 VR missions, 150 alternative, alternative missions. Play through five new Snake Tales missions. Those uh, the Snake Tales side missions weren't canon to the story, but it let you play as Solid Snake through uh, the MGS2 like Tanker chapter, so that was interesting. I don't, I don't remember if the HD collection has the Snake Tales. I think it does. Um, the HD port of MGS2 though is pretty good, but it is missing a couple graphical effects. The one that annoys me the most is. In this version, when you shoot guys, it leaves like blood stains on their body, depending on where you shoot them. But on the HD collection, those blood stains are completely missing. There's also some other minor effects missing as well. So I will always keep this version as it's the most authentic and has the most extras. But uh, it says unlock new playable characters and game modes. Uh, contains the entire MGS2 Sons of Liberty plus the casting theater and boss survival mode, which are exclusives to this uh, version. And here's one of the main things that the HD collection didn't have. 
the skateboarding mini game where you skateboard is Raiden and Snake, which is actually a demo to a Konami skateboarding game. So yeah, um, so this is definitely still the definitive version. HD collection is serviceable, but it's not 100% accurate. And then I also have this, which I found at a GameStop a while ago. This was soon after I got the PS2, actually. Maybe like a year or two after I got it. But I found the document of Metal Gear Solid 2. It's basically a documentary-style disc. You can look at a lot of the in-game assets, like 3D model viewers. It's got some like live-action documentary things of Kojima wandering around New York taking notes and stuff. And uh, yeah, it's just an interesting behind-the-scenes type of... And it's not a DVD either, it's an actual PS2 game. So it does have some playable shit in it, I believe. Oh yeah, it lets you sample some of the VR missions in this. So it's kind of a nice collector's piece. And then, this one. First version of Metal Gear Solid 3. And, uh... Yeah, this one had a lot of problems. It didn't have a very good camera system had a lot of like glitches and such but I played through it and enjoyed it but yeah snake eater and yeah it, the document of MGS2 is a cool concept it's just like a PS2 disc that you can watch making of videos and play around with the 3D models it's a very cool idea but yeah um, great game it's just it needed an upgrade and we could all tell right away when we played it I actually have three fucking copies of this I think I have two sealed copies. Like, my friend Giuliano sent me two other copies of this fucking game. So I got three fucking vanilla Snake Eater copies. One of them sealed. I don't know what to do with them. Um, but yeah, then... Eventually... Oh, yeah. I, I do have the 3DS version as well. But yes, I got the... The limited edition of Metal Gear Solid 3 Subsistence. Unfortunately, my box is kind of bent up and damaged. So it's not the best condition, but... This also is the best version. It's better than the... The uh, HD collection, because it has this extra disc with uh, lots of different stuff on it. So yeah, this just added a lot of shit. I'm getting like kind of low energy now it's like <laughs> an hour into the stream but yeah it's upgraded version of MGS3 um, it's got the upgraded camera system uh, it's got I don't know, just a lot of different extras I can't oh it had the online mode that was the big thing that they added with this but yeah very cool box I like the box sucks my box got damaged but I guess that's what happens with a cardboard box. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see how I feel. Like, I'm almost through the first shelf. I'm on the bottom of the first shelf. So I might be able to get through it. So next up, we have this, which was kind of a mistake to buy. The Metal Slug 4 and 5 collection. They're good ports and everything. Of the classic shoot 'em up Metal Slug series, kind of a comical uh, Contra game, Neo Geo, SNK game, but soon after this Metal Slug uh, anthology came out, which is all six games, or actually seven games, so this is kind of redundant now, other than having a cool cover, I guess, but yeah, this one has all the games on it, so I don't know, it's just kind of pointless to have. But, next up, very good game. I like this one a lot. I'd like to find this on Xbox Original. Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. A 3D beat-em-up kind of game in the Mortal Kombat universe. So this goes through the story of, I believe, Mortal Kombat 2. So he plays Liu Kang and Kun Lao. I think you can unlock Sub-Zero and another character as well. This also has an unlockable arcade port of Mortal Kombat 2, which is pretty interesting. But uh, yeah, very fun series. It's fun to do fatalities on the enemies. 
but I really want to get the Xbox version as well. Then I got a pretty neat uh, limited edition or premium pack it's called of Mortal Kombat Deception. I don't have Deadly Alliance because I don't actually like that game that much. This is so much better than Deadly Alliance. So this was the second PS2 game that came out. And this is a two disc set. So this has Mortal Kombat Deception and it's got this uh, collector's disc as well which has, what has it got on here? Well it's got a port of Mortal Kombat 1, it's got Puzzle Combat, Chess Combat, Conquest Mode. Uh, premium Pack comes with Arcade Perfect MK1, it's not actually Arcade Perfect though. Um, 25 character video bios, in-depth history. Oh, it does have, let's see if I can find that. Ah yes, it's got a little like metal trading card. There's a lot of reflection, but it's like sub-zero trading card. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. Uh, Deception is definitely one of the best 3D ones. Much better than Deadly Alliance for sure. So yeah. I saw Nightbreed made a comment, but I missed it. Let's see. My collection is tiny. <laughs> Come hang out, bro! Okay, next up, another Mortal Kombat game. Not a very good one, Mortal Kombat Armageddon. They tried to put, like, every Mortal Kombat character into this, but they did, like, a custom fatality system that was really generic, so everyone kind of had the same fatalities in a way. I just found this randomly at a Goodwill, so I'm like, ah, why not? It's $3. Might as well try it out. Alright, so next up. Another game that I don't keep on my main shelf because I have an Xbox version, which is the better version. That is Myst 3 Exile. I also have this on PC, so the classic point-and-click adventure Myst series. This port is actually impressive. If you watch the making of documentary of this, which I have up on my channel, they actually had to squeeze a lot out of the PS2 to get this running. But uh, yeah, the Xbox version is a little better because the load times in this are kind of long. But uh, yeah, it's impressive that they got this working on PS2 because it was pretty demanding back in the day. All right, now back to the main shelf. Oh, stream your film collection? I would watch that, man. You fit so many puzzles in this bad boy. All right, so this is made by the Castlevania Symphony of the Night creator. I believe it's on the same engine as those previous PS2 Castlevania games, uh, Lament of Innocence and uh, Curse of Darkness. But this is an original story called Nano Breaker. It's kind of the same kind of beat-em-up combat system as the 3D Castlevanias, but uh, it's like a futuristic. This got horrible reviews back in the day, but it's actually not that bad. It's just kind of an average beat-em-up game. The cool thing is there's tons of blood. Like, I don't know if you can... Yeah, you probably can't see that because of the reflection, but there's just, like, pools of blood that fly out of the enemies. And that was one interesting thing. But I just always wanted it because it's the Castlevania creator, even though it got bad ratings. It's just kind of a sci-fi beat-em-up. Okay. Oh, man. My legs are getting, like, tired out, leaning forward. Okay. Next one. Is, uh, the second game in the Shinobi games, but I've got it earlier because of alphabetical order. It's called Nightshade. So this is the sequel to the PS2 Shinobi. Very good game. Plays the female ninja in this. Oh, what? I, I own games that star females, but I thought I hate women. But yes, Nightshade. Very good Sega ninja combat game. Uh, I think this was the first time Shinobi went into 3D with Shinobi and Nightshade. Um, but yeah, it's very hardcore difficulty. Cutting enemies to pieces, stuff like that. I won't go too into it. I gotta keep moving along. Just too much shit. Just too much, too much. I have a lot of fucking PS2 games. The only thing that rivals my PS2 collection is my PS1 collection. So... 
Next up, a light gun shooter. I got plenty of these on PS2. Cutting these bad boys up. Uh, this one's called Ninja Assault. Um, this is a Namco gun con shooter. It's kind of a weird concept because your ninjas in feudal Japan, or I don't know if it's feudal Japan, but they got fucking... I'm pretty sure it is feudal Japan, but for some reason they have guns. So it's just kind of a retarded story. But yeah, it's it's typical good light gun shooter rail shooting, but with just a ninja theme. And there's one light gun shooter on PS2 I still don't have. I want to get it. It's called Dino Stalker, I believe. And it's basically the Dino Crisis gun con game. So I still need to get that. But my PS2 collection is pretty close to completion. There's just there's always a few more I'd like to get. Alright, so next up. Yes, the Onimusha games. So I have Onimusha 1. I remember buying this at, I think, Walmart back in the day. This was one of the first few games I got on my PS2 as well. Like, I had Vice City and then Metal Gear Solid 2, and then I eventually got Onimusha 1. And then I started buying the rest of the Onimusha games. But this is, you know, Resident Evil with Samurai, basically. And this recently got an HD remaster. But they had to redo the soundtrack because uh, <clears throat> the guy who did the soundtrack had an actual ghostwriter making his music, and he pretended he was deaf to get clout in the industry, even though he wasn't deaf, and he just sucked at making music, so he had someone else composing his music for him. So they had to change the soundtrack in the HD collection because of the rights issues with the guy who actually did this. <laughs> it's, so, it's such a weird thing. And of course I got this, Onimusha 2. Um, this one's called Samurai's Destiny. Plays Jubei instead of uh, Samonosuke. And uh, yeah, this is very cool as well. This has more adventure RPG elements, but uh, still like 3D characters on a 2D background style of game. Just more of the same goodness, pretty much. Although Onimusha 1 might have better uh, atmosphere a little bit. Yeah, the new soundtrack isn't quite as good. But, uh, alright, next up. Oh, now we're on this shelf over here. So we're making... Oh, wait, what'd you say? Oh, you're, th you're talking about Yakuza for removing the actor. Yep. But anyways, um, Onimusha 3 has Gene Reno in it, that French dude. Even though it didn't really use his voice through the whole game. Um, but yeah, this was kind of weird. It was like a time-traveling one. So I believe the French dude goes back in time to feudal Japan and Samonosuke is running around in modern-day uh, Paris. So it was kind of an interesting concept. And this was the first Onimusha game that was in full 3D. So the backgrounds weren't pre-rendered anymore. They were full 3D. So the quality level of the backgrounds wasn't quite as good, but it still looked nice enough. And one thing I really liked about this game is you could like chop the enemies in half and shit, which was really satisfying. But it's a pretty long, sprawling game, and it's a really nice conclusion to the series. And then they made one more game after that, and that is Onimusha Dawn of Dreams, which is kind of a departure for the series. It still kind of has the general gameplay, but it's it's more grindy, and they tried to turn it more RPG-like. So it's a bit more bland as a result, not tightly focused like the other games. So yeah, they made it kind of an RPG, grindy, loot-based hack and slash game whereas the other games were like borderline survival horror style games with like the tank controls and adventure elements but yeah it's still a good game it's just not quite as good as the other ones i believe this one is two discs although these are just two single layered discs where i think the onimusha 3 was a single dual layered disc they started doing this with uh double single layer discs because the ps2s would eventually have their lasers wear out where they didn't read dual layer discs properly. 
So a lot of companies would do double single layer discs just to make it easier for people with weak PS2 lasers. Kind of an interesting factoid there. And then one more Onimusha game. <clears throat> and that is Onimusha Blade Warriors. So this is a Super Smash Brothers style Onimusha game. So it's four player 2D party style combat. I don't know why they thought they should make a whole party style fighting game with Onimusha characters. Like, yeah, there's there's a lot of characters in the series, but it's not like a Nintendo collection where it's a bunch of different characters. So, But it's an interesting game overall. I mean, they even made a game like this for Beautiful Joe, uh, Beautiful Joe Red Hot Rumble. But yeah, it's interesting. Like, if you're a fan of Onimusha, it's a pretty interesting concept to play. Okay. All right. Still in the O's, the O section. Next up, very good 2D RPG, Odin Sphere. This is just called Odin Sphere, even though it got an HD remaster called Odin Sphere Leaf Thrasir. But uh, this PS2 version is still pretty good. It just doesn't have as many extras. And this game really made the PS2 struggle. Like, it has those big detailed sprites and a lot of shit happening on screen. So this would get a lot of slowdown. But it's still a great game overall. You got that nice, beautiful... Oh, back in the day when you get a full fucking manual with all your games. So beautiful. But no more. It's gone. Like tears in the rain. We don't get our manuals except like, I don't know, limited run games do manuals. But that's about it. But yeah, very cool uh, 2D game by Vanillaware. So uh, yeah, it's got kind of 2D beat-em-up elements, but it's an RPG. Very cool art style and story. And then I've got the original Okami for PS2. I've got so many versions of this game as well. I got PS2, I've got the Nintendo Wii version, I've got the PS3 physical import, and I've got the Nintendo Switch version now. And there's a PS4 version, but I don't know if I'll ever get that one. Um, but yeah, here's the original on PS2. Not a lot of point of having it still, but you know, it's it's it defined the PS2 at the time, so it's cool to have it. Okay, I guess we're I'm gonna take a drink because we're like an hour and a half in. I think I earned a, a drink of water. What'd you say? Yeah, I mean, I've got the Switch version of Okami, and that's 1080p, plus it has portable play. I think the PS4 version is like 4K, 30 frames a second. So, eh, not a whole lot of reason to get that. I'm fine with the 1080p version. So, now we got the game on my 3x9 grid or whatever, 3x3 grid, Persona 3, I'm such a hardcore gamer for loving this game, but this is the Persona 3 Fez version, so it's the upgraded version of Persona 3, and I have not played it at all. This was like my ex's go-to game, but uh, I, I was the one that bought it, so I got to keep it, but uh, yeah, Persona 3. I also have Persona 1 on PSP up there, but I don't have Persona 2 yet. Yeah, they need to port P uh, Persona 3 and 4 on the PS4 at some point. I'm surprised they haven't done it yet. But you know when they port it, they're going to fuck it up somehow. But yeah, Persona 3, this is considered to a lot of people as the last real Persona game, but I'm not sure why. I think because they went more like fan service pop j-pop style with persona 4 and this one was still kind of more hardcore i guess i don't know i'm not the expert <clears throat> but next up we of course have persona 4 the original vanilla persona 4 and this is the launch edition that includes a bonus disc 
forget what's on the bonus disc. It might just be a soundtrack or something. But yeah, very cool art style with this packaging and the discs. But uh, I also have the art book that came with pre-orders for this. So I've got all the extras. That's kind of why I went with the collector's edition of Persona 5. Because I already had the collector's stuff of this and Persona 4 Golden. Oh yeah, I hate that when they just put PS2 games on the PS4 digital. It's just like... You're running an ISO. If they can do that, they should let me put this disc in my fucking PS4 and play it. Without having to rebuy it. Okay, next another game from the side pile. Because I have this game on Xbox, so I don't keep this on the main shelf. That's PsyOps. Very cool third person shooter slash psychic power game. So you can throw physical objects around. It's actually a really underrated game. I would highly recommend this. I don't remember if this has a PC port, but I do have it on Xbox, which is a little better. But yeah, this is actually a very underrated, like hidden gem, kind of. But yeah, I, I, I forget which version I got first, but I have it on both Xbox and PS2, so I don't really need to play the PS2 version. Okay, next up, another kind of pointless purchase, because this is a much better game on PC. But Quake 3 um, Revolution, I have Quake 3 on Dreamcast, but this is Quake 3 with all the maps included on the disc. It's just this version has really bad load times. Unless you run it off a PS2 hard drive, then the, then the load times are good. But uh, yeah, I just wanted a physical copy of Quake 3 with all the maps, I guess. It's kind of a pointless purchase though, honestly. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I should have taken a sip. Yeah, I should have. I don't have my monster on me, though. Quake 3 was a good game, though. But, next up, we're to the R's Radiata Story. Now, this is by the, uh, the makers of uh, Star Ocean, which is my poster is right there. But, yeah, Radiata Story is another kind of... I think it's semi-action combat, but... Uh, kind of an interesting diversion with their normal games it's got the nice i think it has like cell shaded style graphics well maybe not cell shaded it's just very stylized graphics but uh yeah i, I didn't beat this game i mostly watch my ex play this but yeah, it's another decent jrpg i just haven't gotten around to it it's one of the many jrpgs in my collection i still need to beat Ooh, another good shoot 'em up series that i've been collecting more and more recently that is Raiden 3. So uh, the only way to get Raiden 1 and 2 is PS1, and it's super expensive. I think it's like a $200 game or something. But uh, I have Raiden 3 on PS2. 3D graphics, vertical shoot 'em up. Very cool. Just keep moving. <laughs> I see the home stretch. I got five more shelves to go. So. And then one that Nightbreed Gaming was playing the other day the PS4 port of Red Faction 1. They did a limited run release of this on PS4, but it's also another emulated PS2 game. Yeah, I'm going to do it in one go. Um, so yeah, I didn't feel the need to get the limited run version of this on PS4, simply because I have the PS2 version already. And if I wanted to play it in HD, I can play the PC version. But... Yeah, this was actually very cool on the PS2 back in the day. Um, just very good destruction in the environment. Um, interesting story on Mars. Kind of a Total Recall style story. And I think this was an early PS2 game. Look at how big these fucking manuals are. Look how many fucking pages is this shit? 41 page manual for a fucking first person shooter. You don't even get a fucking three-page manual with an RPG. You get a 41-page manual with a fucking shooter. Uh, I wish these days were back. I'm going to have to take a boomer sip. Oh, I wish we could be back in the days when we got full instruction manuals. Gone. It's all gone like tears in the rain. 
Yep, it's a first person shooter. <clears throat> Alright, so. Randomly. Got the PS2 version of Code Veronica X, even though it's not the best version of the game. I'd say the GameCube and the Xbox 360 version of this is the best ones to get. But this does the job. It's not terrible. It's just not quite as good. Slightly worse graphics. I think it has like load time issues or something. Yep, we in the Resident Evil now. Although, honestly, PS2 didn't get a lot of the mainline Resident Evils. Like, GameCube was getting all the Resident Evils back then. But we did get games like this. Resident Evil Dead Aim. This is the uh, Gun Con Resident Evil shoot 'em up And uh, luckily, this game had Gun Con support, unlike the PS1 Resident Evil. Uh, Resident Evil Gun Survivor. We didn't get Gun Con support with that. But this, yes, full Gun Con support. Supposedly this runs on the Quake 3 engine. That's what I've heard a, on a YouTube video. So that's kind of interesting. It's a Resident Evil light gun shooter on the fucking Quake 3 engine. So weird. Oh, since I mentioned Quake 3, or take another sip. Quake 3 was a good engine. But, uh, yeah. Kind of interesting. Pretty cheesy story with this one, but fun gameplay. <clears throat> and the very, <laughs> the very downgraded Resident Evil four port on PS2. Highly downgraded, but uh, it pissed off the Nintendo fanboys when it uh, got ported over to PS2. I didn't really care because I had it on GameCube and this version is downgraded. Um, it's got this really nice steel book. Not all versions had the steel book, but I specifically only bought this game later on because I wanted this awesome steel book. And this is the only uh, version of Resident Evil 4 that uh, had a making of DVD with it. So that's kind of interesting. <clears throat> but yeah, it's, it's one of those double cased steel book cases. And luckily it's still in perfect condition. No, no paint chipping on it or anything. But yeah, look at this fucking badass looking case. It's awesome. But yeah, graphically it's pretty downgraded. So there's not much point of playing this. It's just a fucking cool collector's piece. Best version now is probably the PC Ultimate Edition and the PS4 version. I think even the Switch version has a bunch of slowdown in it. <clears throat> so, ooh, got an interesting RPG here. This is by Level 5, the people that did Dark Cloud series and Dragon Quest VIII. But this is one of their original RPGs, Rogue Galaxy. Kind of a cell shaded I think it's action, yeah, it's real-time combat, and it's kind of a sci-fi, almost Star Wars-style story. But uh, this is a game I have not gotten to yet, but it looks really good. Like, it's got that awesome cell-shaded style, just like Dragon Quest VIII. So I definitely want to get to this at some point, but there's not a lot I can say about it. Whew, okay, four more shelves to go. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of Resident Evil games. I don't... I think I've got pretty much all of them. Just Code Veronica, Dead Aim, and Resident Evil 4. I can't think of any other ones. Oh yeah, Outbreak. Those are the only other ones I don't have. I'd like to get the Outbreak games just for collection's sake. It would be cool. But uh, I have those on my modded PS2 to play online. So next up, one of my favorite shoot 'em up series, R-Type. And this is R-Type Final. Actually, of every R-Type game that was released in the U.S., and this was the final, final game until they kickstarted R-Type Final 2, which I did not back because I was so burnt out on Kickstarter that it poisoned the well for me to even back R-Type Final 2, even though I really want it. But I'm just going to wait, and hopefully it has a physical copy after it's done being developed. <laughs> this is our final game, yeah. And this was a good send-off, you know. Um, it has over a hundred ships to unlock, and they all have different weapons, which was really cool. Full 3D, like, PS2 graphics, but it did have a lot of slowdown in it. But yeah, this is kind of the ultimate R-type game. Okay, now we're in the S's. 
and this is a really good anthology of Samurai Showdown games, the Samurai Showdown anthology. It's mostly a good collection, but I believe Samurai Showdown 2 is censored in this version. So you can't do like the cutting guys in half fatalities. But oh yeah, and then it it also has Samurai Showdown 5, but not Samurai Showdown 5 Special, which is the uncensored one. So yeah, two of the games are censored on this, but other than that, it's a pretty good collection. Arcade Perfect, Samurai Showdown 1, which is nice to have. But uh, yeah, the new Samurai Showdown just came out on PS4, and it's coming out on Switch pretty soon. I want to get that. Um, I'll probably get it on PS4 when it's cheap. Uh, but yeah, I, I played a lot of Samurai Showdown back in the day. I originally had the uh, 3DO version, which my 3DO collection is right there. So that's what I originally played it on. I played Samurai Showdown 1 on 3DO, which is near arcade perfect. So yeah, I have nostalgia for the series. And I will get that uh, PS2 game, or PS4 game at some point. It's just, I'm going to wait till it's like $20. <clears throat> and now, a game in the Way of the Samurai series, sort of. This was a spin-off of Way of the Samurai. It's called Samurai Western. So it's basically samurais and cowboys facing off each other using that big-brained Japanese magic where they can deflect bullets and shit. <laughs> Look at that black dude on the cover. What the fuck is up with him? <laughs> he looks kind of like Jared. <laughs> He's got the Jared hair. But uh, uh, Way of the Samurai is more of a... RPG adventure samurai simulator, whereas this is a full-blown action game. So it's more of an over-the-top Japanese action game where it's you're a samurai facing off against a bunch of cowboys shooting at you. So it's an interesting concept. It was kind of tough for me to find a decent copy of this because it's not the most common game, but it's also not super expensive because it's not like that desirable. There's some games like that where there's not a ton of copies, but people don't really care about it that much, so it's still easy to find for a decent price. Oh, and now here's a really great game that I got recently. Shadow of Rome, a Capcom Rome game. This was made by, I believe, Kenji Ifuni, the uh, Dead Rising um, guy. And what genre... Which genre of what? The Samurai Western? That was an action hack and slash game. And this is pretty much an action beat-em-up game. Made by the Res, uh, the Dead Rising creator and Mega Man guy Kenji Ifune, I believe. And the Onimusha guy. So, uh, yeah, this is... This is, um... This is almost like Dead Rising in Rome. Like... It's got some of the same Dead Rising controls. It has the same, like, picking up weapons in the environment. It's even got some of the same Dead Rising animations. I think they reused animations from this in Dead Rising. So this is almost like a tech demo for Dead Rising. But in Rome, so you can, like, you can still cut guys up like you would the zombies into pieces. But it's really brutal combat. But then you also play as a side character. Uh, well, okay, so you play as... The gladiator Agrippa, and then you switch to Octave, Octavius or Octavianus. I forget how to pronounce his name. And you do more like stealth, like missions, kind of puzzle solving stuff like that. So it's got two different styles to it. You're either playing as the gladiator in the arena, chopping dudes up, or you're sneaking around, the, you know, the Roman streets. It's even got chariot races, but this is one I still got to beat. Very well done game. I'm glad I picked this up. I wanted to grab it before it got too expensive. And I think my copy is like perfect condition as well. Oh, another beautiful. Oh, this manual is in black and white though. Yeah, um, I believe this is definitely better than Rise Son of Rome. But, uh, you know, it's just PS2 graphics. I actually didn't mind Rise too much. I played a little bit on PC, but yeah, Shadow of Rome is just so much better. And then... Actually... 
we'll go back down to my miscellaneous pile. We're almost done with that pile. I also have this game on PS2, Second Sight. Now this is by the Time Splitters developers, but this is a third person kind of stealth shooter type game. And uh, I have this on Xbox Original, so I don't keep this on the main shelf for that reason. But the PS2 version is very good as well. So I believe I had the Xbox version of this first, but then I saw this on PS2 at Goodwill. I'm like, ah, eh, might as well buy it. It's such a good game. But yeah, this is on the same graphics engine as Time Splitters and Time Splitters 2 and 3. But yeah, it's a third person, psychic powers, stealth shooting game, pretty much all in one. Very underrated. Well, maybe it's not underrated. I think a lot of people like this. It's just kind of a niche game in a way. And I don't know, I guess I'll just show this as well since this is the last in the, the uh, extra pile. Just got a random PS2 Volume 14 Jam Pack demo disc. Remember, remember the PlayStation Jam Pack demo discs? So yes, I do have this. This has 10 hot new games. Shadow of the Colossus, Ratchet, Deadlocked, iToy, Operation Spy, Okami, Hitman Blood Money, MLB 06, Lara Croft Tomb Raider Legend, Black, Drakengard 2, and Driver Parallel Lines, which I have a lot of these games, actually. Yeah, um, I forget which... I thought this one... I think this came with, like, a magazine or some sort of su subscription to it, but I just found this in the wild somewhere. Yeah, it's kind of interesting when you used to get demo discs like that. But yeah, back to the regular shelf now. We got Shadow of the Colossus. The, you know, the classic that's got ported to PS3 and then remade on PS4. I do have the PS3 version and the PS4 remake. But I've just played through it like two times now, so I'm kind of burnt out on it. So I've been taking my time with the PS4 version because it's like I've already played this. This is kind of a one-time experience kind of game. It's, it's tough for me to replay it now because... But yeah, all the ports are actually good. The PS3 port is more like this PS2 version, just in HD. But the PS4 version is amazing. Like It's really well done. But yeah, they're, they're all good. They're all accurate. So there's not, there's actually not a lot of reason for having this PS2 version anymore because really there's nothing wrong with the PS3 version. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a one-time play thing for me as well. But uh, here's the first game in that Shinobi series on PS2, just called Shinobi, followed by the, what I showed earlier, uh, uh, Nightshade. But uh, yeah, this is... I actually like this one more than Nightshade, because Nightshade kind of cut out a lot of the blood effects, where this one is full-blown, like, blood effects, and the dismemberment is more... Plus, it's just a cooler character. I'm not really into the female ninja as much, like... The actual male shinobi guy is more of a badass. But yeah, this one's very hard. I was getting very frustrated with it, but I did eventually beat it. Because I wanted to beat one of the hardest games on PS2. That's what it's known for. So, very cool action hack and slash game. Very fast paced, very fluid, but very hard. Ooh, now we're getting into the good shit. The good shit. Silent Hill 2... The Greatest Hits version. Now this version, because it's Greatest Hits, it has all of the Xbox extras. So it has the additional playable character, Maria. Uh, more endings, more weapons, new areas, and enhanced graphics. Originally, PS2 just got the vanilla version of this. And then Xbox original got a port of it with all these extras. This was the one I was waiting for. Unfortunately, again, you had to buy it with the Greatest Hits label to get all of the extras. And yes, ooh, this is good shit, 100. 100% good shit. Um, but yeah, you had to get the Greatest Hits version to get all the Xbox extras. <laughs> it doesn't all fit. But yeah, Silent Hill 2, one of the best Silent Hill games for sure. Not my favorite. I still like Silent Hill 1 more. And then, of course, I have Silent Hill 3. 
And uh, this is a direct sequel to Silent Hill 1, so it tells what happened with Harry Mason and his daughter. Plays his daughter in this. And uh, this was the... I think all versions were like this, but it came with an actual soundtrack. Very cool. So extra soundtrack disc. Awesome soundtrack with this game. Akira Yameoka, one of my favorite game composers. Yeah... Silent Hill was a much better horror game in that generation for sure. But yeah, then it died. But that's okay, because it died after Silent Hill 4. We didn't need the rest of those games. But yeah, this is very cool. Very cool uh, atmosphere, the environments, the monsters, the story. Big brained. Big brain shit. <laughs> Can't say the whole phrase on my YouTube channel, because some douchebag will probably flag me. Um, then we got Silent Hill 4, not quite the best Silent Hill game, but still better than the Western developed ones. This is where they started to uh, fuck up the games a bit, but it was still Japanese developed. It was still about the cult storyline, even though they kind of fucked up the gameplay in this a bit, but it was still a cool story. And you can see my copy has... Uh, this pre-order bonus soundtrack disc. Not the full soundtrack, but a lot of the good songs from this game. So yeah, I'm glad to have that. And uh, yeah, I also have this on Xbox Original, which is a decent port. Oh boy, and then... But yeah, they were going to revive it with Kojima. That version probably would have been okay. I assume Kojima would have done a better job than the Western Studios, but I think Kojima is actually reusing some of the ideas from Silent Hills in Death Stranding. That's kind of like one of the main reasons I'm still interested in trying Death Stranding. I want to see what kind of concepts he might have reused. But yeah, I don't know if I'm going to buy Death Stranding on day one. Yeah, you spent more time watching the Twin Perfect videos. <laughs> and here's where Western developers started to take over. Silent Hill Origins. Now, this is a PS2 port of the PSP game. And honestly, this one isn't too bad. It's still about the cult, but it's made by Western developers, and it's a prequel to Silent Hill 1. But they fucked up a lot of the elements of the story. They... They screwed up the origin story of how Alessa got burnt up because they didn't understand the lore properly. But it's still an okay game. Like, this is one of the few Western Silent Hill games I can stand playing still. And playing this on the PSP was pretty impressive because it was like a PS2 style Silent Hill game on a portable. So, this one isn't too bad, but you just have to ignore the retconning they did with the prequel story. Yeah, I understand that completely with not supporting Kojima. Um, I think Death Stranding will be his last PS4 game, so I'm done with gaming after PS4, so I'll probably buy it, just not full price on day one. We shall see. Uh, I probably won't have enough money to buy it that month anyways, so... But yeah, Silent Hill Origins is decent, and I've got the PS2 port so I can play it on a TV. So that's it for my PS2 Silent Hill games. Now we're back to another shoot 'em up. Sylphheed. This is Sylphheed the Lost Planet. And this is another treasure game. My mommy's calling me. <laughs> mommy! <laughs> Check my YouTube channel, Mommy. I'm trying to do a live stream. But, uh, see, unlike someone else that we won't mention, my mommy has to call me to talk to me. She doesn't come up to my door to talk to me. <laughs> but uh, I'll call her back later. I'm getting close to the end. I've got three and a half more shelves. But Sylphied. This is a sequel to a Sega CD shoot 'em up. You probably... No, I live in a shitty apartment, remember. But no, this is made by Treasure again. The people who did Radiant Silver Gun, Gradius Five, and all that. But yeah, it's it's another shoot 'em up. It's not nothing too special, but it's decent. I don't know, not much to say about this. 
The Sega CD Sylphid game was pretty cool as well. <laughs> Even they're reviewing mustard. Your hungry man is done. <laughs> okay. So next up, another series I really like that doesn't get enough love. That's the Forbidden Siren, or it's just called Siren in the U.S. This is the original on PS2. This series was made by the Silent Hill 1 creator, uh, the director of Silent Hill 1. And this is a more, like, stealth-based horror game. It's got kind of that Silent Hill aesthetic still with the foggy, grainy-looking visuals. But uh, this is in a Japanese town. Yeah, it's got that creepy, like, digitized faces on the character models. So it's like a polygon model with like a digitized animated face. So it gets kind of that weird, what's that effect called where it looks kind of real but not real. I forget what it was called. But uh, very cool series. It only got three games total. Got this one. It got Siren 2, which was Europe and Japanese only. And then it got a remake of this game called Siren New Translation or Blood Curse it's called in the U.S. But yeah, I like I like the uh the lore with this series. It's it's weird. It's like a combo of like sci-fi and supernatural at the same time. But yeah, it's it's very neat. It's kind of clunky though, not going to lie. It's it's tough to play. Like a newcomer would be really turned off cuz it's very trial and error, but it's very rewarding if you get through it. All right, so here's a bunch of games I found at Goodwill. All of these I found at Goodwill. I wasn't even planning on getting these games. Yeah, it's like aliens and Shinto mythology type of shit combined. It's weird. But, uh... SOCOM series. Wasn't really into it normally. Didn't play it at all back in the day, but I started seeing them popping up at Goodwill. I'm like, all right, well, I like squad-based shooters, so I might as well try out this series. So, yeah, I found, you know, SOCOM 1. Let's just, let's just grab all of them here. So we got SOCOM 1. SOCOM 2, Na U.S. Navy SEALs. SOCOM 3. And uh, SOCOM Combined Assault. There might be one other game on PS2. But it might be an online focus one. I can't remember. But they're all kind of the same. Um, overall, just slightly different story. And then I recently was getting the, the PS3 games. I think I got one or two of the PS3 games. And the PS3 game with the PlayStation Move support is actually really fun. Because it's really well done PlayStation Move support. But yeah, I haven't played them a ton. I played a little bit of the first game, but it's a very cool squad-based shooter. It was very popular online. So, all right, next up, got Soul Calibur 2, the PS2 version. I kind of want, like, all versions of this. Like, I want to get the Xbox version to play as Spawn, and then the GameCube version to play as Link. But the first version I wanted to get was the PS2, simply because I wanted to play as the Tekken character. Oh yeah, I want to get those SOCOM PSP games as well. Those would be cool to have. But yeah, I mostly got this PS2 version to play as uh, Hihachi from Tekken. So yeah, I'm much, much bigger fan of Tekken than the other character cameos, so I got that version. Then I also have Soul Calibur 3. I believe this one was a PS2 exclusive. So, yeah, I can play as Link in Smash Brothers. So I was kind of like, I'd rather play as Hihachi from Tekken. But I would like to get the GameCube version eventually. It's just like... <laughs> he almost called him Zelda. <laughs> But yeah, um, I would like to get the GameCube version. It's just, I, it's probably a more expensive copy because more people want it. And I don't really care that much to play as Link. But yeah, Soul Calibur 3, PS2 exclusive. Supposedly some things about this one were rushed. But a lot of people still like Soul Calibur 3. I haven't played this one a ton. It's mostly Soul Calibur 1 and Soul Calibur 2 that I play the most. But yeah. Here's another game, another Dreamcast to PS2 port. That is Space Channel 5, a rhythm-based game. 
You're actually not that big of a fan of Zelda. Yeah. Yeah, that's understandable. It's not for everyone. But yeah, Space Channel 5 rhythm based game. I think fucking Michael Jackson is in this game. But I have the Dreamcast version as well. I think this PS2 port includes the expansion pack that was on Dreamcast. But uh, I think, once again, this has worse visuals than the Dreamcast version. Yeah, this is just kind of the, one of those weird, quirky games. So I haven't even actually played it. <laughs> I just bought it because it's a meme. And then this game, SSX, is a very good snowboarding game that I want to get more of these games. I only have the original, but I heard SSX 3 is one of the best. I'd like to get that game on Xbox Original. Just makes you think of soy. <laughs> um, but yeah, SSX, very cool snowboarding game. More of an extreme, over-the-top type of snowboarding game. Not realistic or anything. But uh, yeah, I only found the first game at Goodwill. Haven't seen any other ones. Actually, I did see SSX 3 at Goodwill, but it was so scratched up, I didn't want to buy it. Okay, so now the game I have of the poster behind me. It is Star Ocean Till the End of Time. It's got that nice cardboard glossy outer box. This is actually a really good Star Ocean game. The series kind of went downhill after this. The 360 and PS3 game and then the PS4 game were all weaker than this one. Um, I don't even know why this is in a cardboard box like this. But uh, this is actually an upgraded version of the original Japanese release. I believe they put a bunch of extra stuff on the U.S. version. So yeah, the U.S. got it later, but we got all the extras that the Japanese had to buy it twice for. So yeah, very good game. Only thing is the plot twist at the end of this game was kind of stupid. I don't know if I want to spoil it, but it kind of retcons the entire story into being redundant. Well, that's all I'll say. But yeah, it's a great game until the ending, basically. <laughs> The ending basically ruined the story of the rest of the games from there on out. So. Oh god, this is such a weird game. State of Emergency. So this was on the Grand Theft Auto 3 engine. It was like a beat-em-up in, like, levels with huge crowds of people. And look at this fucking warning on here. Warning, check ID... Like, I don't get why this game got such controversy. I guess because you can shoot and beat up people in big crowds. So they thought it was like a mass shooter type simulation. But it's really not even that violent. It's like, I don't know. I didn't get the controversy with this. But it's not even that good of a game either. <laughs> but like, yeah. Uh, eventually saw it at, I, I don't I think I got this at my local used game store, not Goodwill. Just because I wanted to have this game because it was a part of the PS2 history. Just the controversy with it. And I don't even understand why, but... I don't... Is that the original sticker that they put on it? Or maybe that was like a, a store-exclusive sticker. But yeah, like they didn't want the kids to buy this game, even though it really wasn't that bad. <laughs> Alright, another... Uh, Retro Collection Disc, the Street Fighter uh, Anniversary Collection. Um, this has Street Fighter 2 Anniversary Edition and Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. So this is a good disc to have if you want like an offline disc collectible version of Street Fighter 3. The Street Fighter 2 version is kind of weird. It's Super Street Fighter 2, but it like combines all the versions of Street Fighter 2 into one game. And then you can select different versions of the Street Fighter 2 characters. But yeah, it's it's strange. And then it even has the full-length Street Fighter 2 anime movie, it says right there in the middle. But the Street Fighter 2 anime movie on this disc is the censored version. So it's not the it's not the best version of the Street Fighter 2 anime to watch, but it's still kind of a cool extra that you can at least watch the censored version on the PS2 disc. So yeah, I mostly got it because I wanted a physical copy of Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. Okay, another interesting game. I don't think it got the best ratings, but it's a decent game. Siphon Filter, The Omega Strain. 
So Siphon Filter was pretty popular stealth action shooter on the PS1. And this was the first PS2 game. Uh, pretty much the only game specifically developed for PS2. Um, it still plays like the classic Siphon Filter where you run around using a lock-on aim rather than free aiming. And uh, it's got some stealth elements. It's The story's all about like stopping viruses. Um, but yeah, um, this one actually had online co-op, which was not a lot of games had that on PS2. Unfortunately, uh, no one has kept this game alive. Um, it would be cool if one day you could play this on emulator online because it does have co-op. But uh, yeah, it's interesting. You don't play as the main character in it, uh, Gabe. You play as like a player created character, but I believe Gabe is still in the story. But yeah, I've got the version with this outer sleeve and everything. So yeah, kind of interesting. So yeah, let's move on. So now I got some more Siphon Filter games, but these were originally on PSP. First one is uh, Siphon Filter Dark Mirror. This was the first PSP game. Very excellent game. Um, only unfortunate thing is this PS2 port of it, it's a teen rated game, so they removed all the blood that was originally in the PSP version. So this one is less violent. PSP version is rated M, but it's still a good game without the blood. That's just one bummer about it, and it's nice to be able to play this on a TV. And then it also got a port of the second PSP game, Logan Shadow. Now this was rated teen on PSP as well, so this version being rated teen is the same as the PSP version. For some reason, after the PSP version of Dark Mirror, they started to make the games teen rated. I don't know why, they wanted more mass market appeal. But yeah, the Siphon Filter always had good like blood effects, so this is kind of disappointing. And now this the the people that made the Siphon Filter series made that new uh days gone game that zombie game that wasn't that good so that's a bit unfortunate but yeah um not much you can say this one is more of a third person shooter whereas the other game was kind of a lock-on third person shooter but this one has actual free like dual analog style aiming so they tried to make this more of a standard shooter with stealth elements but it's still a very good game especially on psp this is more impressive on PSP than it is on PS2. Alright, we're getting there. We're getting there. Alright, another good uh, retro collection disc. This is Taito Legends 2. Uh, there's another collection as well, but this had most of the games that I wanted on it. So, the main reason I got this is games like Darius Gaiden. Um, it has... Uh, Elevator Action Returns. Uh, it has Darius. It has another Darius game as well. And then it just has a bunch of different shoot 'em ups on it, basically. But it was mainly the Darius games that I wanted to get it for. But yeah, very nice collection disc. Decent emulation job as well. So you can probably look this game up online if you want to see the full game list. But uh, yeah to have a physical copy it was better than buying Darius Gaiden on Sega Saturn which is much more expensive so I just got that PS2 collection all right now we got some Tales of games this was the first PS2 Tales of game Tales of Legendia uh, this wasn't made by the same studio who did Vesperia so it's a bit different there's multiple Tales of developer studios but I believe they've all merged into one at this point, but I might be wrong about that. So uh, this one's a bit weaker. The story is not as good. Then again, all the tales of games don't have the strongest story. But uh, yeah, it's an okay game. It's just not the best tales of game. I think I even have the art book for that one. Pre-order bonus. And then of course this game, Tales of the Abyss, made by the Symphonia and Vesperia developers. So this was originally a PS2 exclusive, 
and then they ported it to PS3, or no, th they ported this to uh, 3DS eventually. And it's pretty much the same game on 3DS, just kind of dumbed down graphically a little bit. But yeah, this is a very good game. It's just not as good as Symphonia, in my opinion. So, yeah. Vesperia is probably a little better than that as well. Alright, now we got some Tekken games, boy. Got Tekken Tag Tournament. I still want to get Tekken Tag Tournament 2. But yeah, I have the first Tekken Tag. I think there's even a PS3 port of this game. It's on like... It's, it's weird. To get the PS3 port of this, you have to buy the Tekken movie on Blu-ray. And there's like a special edition set, I believe, that includes a remake of this on PS3. But yeah, this is... This is still on the Tekken 3 engine, I believe. Um, but yeah, this was kind of holding people over until Tekken 4 came out. It doesn't have a story in it at all. It's just, you know, tag team matches, basically. And then, this one, Tekken 4. This was one of the first PS2 Tekken games I played, and I really loved it. Um... I guess a lot of people don't like this one as much, but I have a lot of nostalgia for Tekken 4. I thought it was quite amazing at the time, graphically and gameplay-wise, but I guess Tekken 5 is technically better than this one. But uh, I wanted to eventually buy this, and I got this recently, like maybe a year or a year and a half ago. So yeah, it's a cool game. And I have this as well, of course, Tekken 5. Now, there is an upgraded version of this on both PSP and PS3, but I believe this PS2 version is the only one that has all of the ending cutscenes. So the PS3 upgraded port is just the fighting game. It doesn't have all the endings like this version. And I believe the interesting thing about this, if I'm correct, you can unlock Tekken 1 through 3 arcade versions on this disc. And... Uh, yeah, that's, that, that's a very cool extra to own the PS2 version for. Okay, done with the Tekken games. Oh, we're on the last two shelves here as well, so we're just about done here. Alright, very good game. Tenchu, Fatal Shadows. Now this is a sequel to the first Tenchu game on PS2, um, Tenchu 3, but... Uh, I have Tenchu 3 Return to Darkness on Xbox Original, so I actually sold my PS2 version. But this is the sequel. This is PS2 exclusive. Stars two lady uh, ninjas. And, uh, yeah, um, From Software actually kind of helped port or publish this game a bit. I don't know if they developed it. It was K2 that developed it. But, uh, yeah, this is very cool. They tried to make it kind of that cheesy 1970s ninja tv show style almost but uh yeah it's very good stealth action um not quite as good as uh tenchi 3 but still a very cool stealth ninja game and here's another random goodwill pickup the getaway i believe this is a london based grand theft auto kind of clone um, it hasn't aged very well, honestly. I tried playing it, and it's just not as good as Grand Theft Auto. I think even back then, I didn't like it as much as Grand Theft Auto. But, you know, another $3 Goodwill pickup, so whatever. Okay, we're trying to get through it. It's another game that girl sent me. Leg Legacy of Cain, Blood Omen 2. This was a direct sequel to the PS1 Blood Omen game. Not the best game ever, but it's cool to have the entire Legacy of Kane series. So I do have some other Legacy of Kane games in here. So we also have Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver 2. This is a direct sequel to the Dreamcast Soul Reaver game. Pretty much the same gameplay, kind of platforming, puzzle solving, and combat mixed together. Very fun game. They still need to finish the storyline in this series, supposedly. I haven't beaten the last game, but I guess it ends on a cliffhanger. And speaking of which, this is the last Legacy of Kane game, Defiance. 
This lets you play as uh, Raziel and Kane in the same game. I think they team up in this, but I haven't gotten around to beating this. <clears throat> Honestly, I still have to beat Soul Reaver uh, on Dreamcast. But uh, yeah, I would like to get through all of these games. It's just disappointing knowing that this game ends on a cliffhanger. Alright, so now we got Lord of the Rings. The Two Towers, and I'll grab this other one too, since they're directly connected, and Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. These are the EA officially licensed beat-em-up games. They're like typical arcade beat-em-up titles. But yes, in the Lord of the Rings universe, very cool. Directly related to the movies, so there's actual like movie clips in the games. Um, and I believe I have Two Towers on Xbox Original as well. I believe believe yeah that's the version I have but then I found you know Return of the King on PS2 so yep very cool very fun not the best games ever or anything but it's fun to be able to play through scenes from the movie in a beat em up game and this is a very interesting game as well not talked about a lot but it's the X-Files game for PS2 it's called Resist or Serve and uh, it's a kind of a Resident Evil clone game in the X-Files universe. So I haven't beaten this one either. But you go into a town and investigate almost like an outbreak. It's almost like zombies, but they're not. They're, they're the black oil possessed type people, I believe. And uh, yeah, I need to beat this. It's, you know, a typical survival horror with tank control style game with pre-rendered angles. But... It's got the actual voices from the TV show. Um, not just uh, Mulder and Scully, but I think some other characters show up as well. But Yeah, it's a cool game. I just need to actually sit down and beat it. It's a lot more clunky than even Resident Evil, though. Alright, we're getting there. We're getting there. Some more light gun shooters. Time Crisis 2. And I actually do have the big box of this that includes the gun. It's just... I just got this to show you guys. Might as well grab the other games as well. Oh, I keep the phone calls. Alright. So I got all three PS2 Time Crisis games. So 2, 3, and uh, Crisis Zone. So yes, yes. So happy to have every Time Crisis game ever made. I've got Time Crisis 4 and Raising Storm on PS3 as well. Yeah, big fan of Time Crisis and light gun games in general. Alright. We're getting there. Alright. Next game, Time Splitters 1. This is PS2 exclusive. The other games came out on other platforms, but this remained a PS2 exclusive. So yeah, I had to get it. Because I like the Time Splitters games. They're the same people that made GoldenEye and Perfect Dark. So that's kind of what they went on to make after that. And unfortunately, those developers made uh, the crappy Haze game on PS3, which got universally panned. Speaking of bad games, here's another one I wouldn't recommend you buying. Lara Croft Tomb Raider Angel of Darkness. This is the first Tomb Raider game on PS2, and it was a disaster. They rushed it. Terrible controls, bad graphics. Just crappy game overall, but I had to buy it just to complete my Tomb Raider collection, so not a good game. There's a PC version, though, with some mods that improves it a little bit, but it's still not that good of a game. Here's another random Goodwill find, the PS2 version of Splinter Cell 1. Simply bought this because it was $3, and it was interesting to see what they had to do to downgrade this to make it work on PS2. And it's, a, it's an interesting version. It has some exclusive levels, so that's pretty much the only reason I bought it. <clears throat> Alright, next up. We're just trying to roll through this now quickly. Because people are calling me, <laughs> so i got to see what's going on. Um, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4. It's actually the only uh, PS2 generation Tony Hawk game that I have. I want to get I want to get all these games on Xbox Original to be honest, but this was one of the few I found at Goodwill, so I grabbed it. But Tony Hawk 4 is one of my favorite ones. But yeah, I definitely want to get all the other ones, but on Xbox. 
So, yeah, not much you can say about Tony Hawk. Legendary skateboarding game that kind of fell from grace in the recent generation, unfortunately. Oh, this is a really, really good game on PS2. Twisted Metal Black. Yes, yes. Very good version of the car combat game, Twisted Metal. Has a very gothic art style. Much darker than the other games. Really cool cutscenes with the characters. I always like the endings and the intro with uh, Paint It Black was awesome. Very cool combat arenas. Nice graphics for PS2. Just all around awesome game. I haven't played the new Twisted Metal yet either. And then here's another kind of pointless game I bought. Because the PC version is much better. But Unreal Tournament on PS2. I was trying to decide between this version or Dreamcast. Like each version has their pros and cons. But I just went with this because it was cheaper. And I'd rather play with the PS2 controller than the Dreamcast because of the dual analog. But yeah, I wanted some sort of like physical cop console copy of Unreal Tournament, so I got that. Alright. Next up, Valkyrie Profile 2. You know, this is an excellent, excellent RPG. Cool story. Um, it's uh, got kind of 2D style platforming gameplay, but the combat is like turn-based. But uh, yeah, very cool story. Unfortunately, they haven't continued the series after this. They did one like DS spinoff, and then they made a spiritual successor called Exist Archive with similar gameplay. But yeah, it's unfortunate. But this is a really good game, and the PS1 game is also really good. Alright, we're getting through it. We're almost done. Next up, another PS2 light gun, gun con shooter. This is Vampire Knight, so this was actually made by both Namco and people from Sega who worked on House of the Dead. So it's almost House of the Dead style in gameplay, but instead of zombies, you're shooting vampires. So very interesting concept, very good light gun support since it's the Gun Con 2. And the PS2 Gun Con 2 is a very accurate light gun. Um, all light guns on HD... Uh, screens are more like virtual mouse pointers so they're not as pinpoint accurate whereas the gun con 2 was pinpoint accurate like it, it was super fucking accurate down to the pixel but uh yeah vampire knight is very awesome if you like house of the dead but with vampires and i also have this beautiful joe one on ps2 even though i have beautiful joe one and two on gamecube this PS2 version of 1 has a very cool extra, uh, probably hard to see, but uh, it has Dante from Devil May Cry as a guest character. So that's one reason to own this PS2 version if you want to play as Dante in a, in a Beautiful Joe game. But Beautiful Joe, do I have to really say much about it? It's cell shaded 2D beat em up action game made by Clover Studios, which is now Platinum Games. So yeah, very good game. Very, very good game. All right. Trying to get through it now. I, I see the ending in sight. Another very good game, Virtua Fighter 4 uh, Evolution version. So this was released as a vanilla version, but this Evolution version, I believe, added two new characters. And a lot of like extra modes as well. But Virtua Fighter is one of my favorite 3D fighting game series. It doesn't really have a story to it. There's a story in the instruction manual, but in the actual game, it's just the fighting. And it's all based on like real martial art styles. Um, but yeah, it's long running series, but unfortunately died after Virtua Fighter 5. They don't really make new ones anymore. So, yeah, but Virtua Fighter 4 Evolution, awesome game. It has a really cool unlockable extra where you can play uh, basically all the characters in this game, but in Virtua Fighter 1, like, low polygon style. So it's almost like playing Virtua Fighter 1 again, but with all the new characters. Very cool extra. All right, now a very cool series. I'll just grab both the games at once to speed this up a bit. We got... 
the Way of the Samurai series, which I had mentioned earlier. These are samurai simulator RPG adventure type games. A lot of branching dialogue in these games, a lot of customization with your weapons and equipment. Um, you're usually wandering around like a small Japanese town, but there's a lot of different endings and storyline paths to go through it. So it's a, they're short games, but you can play them multiple times in different ways and keep unlocking stuff. So it's a very cool series, and it kept going. Uh, they made Way of the Samurai 3 and 4 on PS3 and Xbox 360 and PC as well. But uh, yeah, these two were PS2 exclusive. This part 2 was actually really tough to find. I think I had to order it on... Uh, I forget that there was... There was that eBay offshoot site that got closed down recently, and I ordered this from there right before it closed down, and it's a perfect condition copy. This doesn't show up on eBay a lot, even though it's not super expensive. It's, not, it's another one of those games uh, where there's not a lot of copies, but it's also not super expensive, so it's weird. Yeah, very cool series. Oh, another random one. I think I found this at GameStop a while ago. That is Wild Arms 3, another RPG series that I haven't really played much, so I can't really say a lot about it. But I do have Wild Arms 2 on uh, PS1. I just don't have Wild Arms 1, and I think there's there's a remake of Wild Arms 1 on PS2 as well. But uh, it would be cool to get like HD remaster of this series. I think this game is yeah, this game's cell shaded as well, so it has a really nice art style. Ooh, okay, here we go. I'll grab all three of these games. We're getting into the X's. So what do you think X means? X means Monolith, Xenosaga, boy. I got all three Xenosaga games. Um, they're all directly connected. This was originally going to be a six-part game, but, you know, they, they cut it down to three parts, and they kind of rushed it. The only unfortunate thing is all of these games have a lot of censorship on the U.S. versions. Very good sci-fi RPG series. It's just unfortunate we never got uncensored versions. Like, they censored the violence. I think they censored religious aspects of the story. So, I'm not sure if there's... I should check to see if there's translations of the Japanese... Like, translation patches of the Japanese version. But the most I played was just the first game and some of the second, so I never actually beat it. When I found out they were censored, it actually killed my motivation to beat the series, even though it's a good series. But yeah, they need to make like an HD collection of these games uncensored. Who knows if they'll ever do that, though. And Alright, another random game I found at Goodwill. I think this is an RPG series. This is a... Uh, X-Men Legends. I think Legends 2 is supposedly the better game, but, you know, I just found this randomly for $3, so I'm like, ah, oh, might as well finally try it. Alright, last two games. Now I can finally call the people back that were calling me during this stream. Alright, last two games. That is Zone of the Enders 1 and 2. So, yes, these got ported to PS3. Although the PS3 version had a lot of glitches in it that eventually got fixed. And then Zone of the Enders 2 just got a PS4 port with uh, VR support. But yeah, Zone of the Enders 1 was kind of a weak game. And the main reason, the main reason <laughs> they sold it was the Metal Gear Solid 2 demo disc. <laughs> Same thing they did with uh, Dragon Quest. 8, putting the Final Fantasy 12 demo in it. But yeah, look at that fucking anime looking ass style. But yeah, uh, Zone of the Enders 2 was definitely the better game overall. They're both very short mech combat games. Uh, very high speed action rather than Armored Core, which is like more slow paced. You know, uh, customization. This is like flying high speed mech but uh, uh, I think it says the creative team behind Metal Gear Solid, but I think Hideo Kojima only produced these games. He didn't actually develop them. So it's just people that worked on Metal Gear basically made these. 
So yeah, unfortunately they never made a Zone of the Enders 3. So I'll rip that series as well. But yeah, that is it for my PS2 collection live stream. Definitely an epic time doing this. We're at 2 hours and 30 minutes. Wow. Got it done just in time, huh? Well, if you guys would like to see another one of these style of live streams, I would be interested in doing it again. Maybe we could do a uh, Nintendo Wii live stream or uh, Xbox Original. I know I haven't done a Wii collection video, but uh, Xbox Original I might have done already. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you on the next video. Alright, thanks for watching. Peace out, everyone.